Hello everybody, and welcome back to Space Engine, where we left off. We were around this temperate Super Oceana Aquaria. No, Super Oceanic Aquaria. No, Temperate Oce Super Oceanic Aquaria. Damn, reading's hard. My cat's in here, I don't know what she's on about, but whatever. Anyways, we're gonna carry on to Parts Unknown. <laughs> First off, uh, we're gonna go to HD. Well, 14.02.8.3. Oop. Because why not? Why? Uh, why are the lines all turned on? That's exposure. Yeah. There's a way to turn this off. I don't remember how. But. <laughs> hmm. Wait a minute. I think I know how to do this. Oh, that's magnitude. That's time scale. That's exposure. I'm very confused. Eh, whatever. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we have HD. Okay, I'm really confused here. Why are these turned on? How did I turn them off? Yes, yeah, seriously, you're not helping. So it's just the constellations. The question is, how do I turn off the constellations, and why are they turned on in the first place? I don't remember turning them on. I literally just booted it up right now. This shouldn't be a thing. Eh. Well, I figure that out. I'll, um... Ooh, cool. Talk about something else. Uh, oh. This might help. Stars. Constellations. There we go. Anyways. Yeah, so we were at, what was it? HD 14, there we go. <laughs> well, that was an adventure. Uh, a white sub-dwarf. Well, that's kind of depressing. But, it has five planets. Check those out. Uh, a very hot Neptune. Hot Arid Terra, Warm Super Neptune, Warm Super Oceana Aquaria, and a Cold Jupiter. Fun times, go to the Hot Neptune, because why not? Now, I've been thinking that with this channel, uh, I feel kind of bad about how I go months without doing anything. It's usually because I'm busy, but that's no excuse. These videos take no time at all to make. So I'm going to start doing it where at least once a month I release a video either Space Engine or otherwise, but at least once a month, or not month, week. Once a week, I release a video. There we go. Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> so that's, that's going to be something. I'll have an actual schedule for once, because I don't have a schedule for this channel usually. And uh, we can go from there. Uh, other things, like... Let's go to Trappist, because I was asked to go there. Other things, like... Um, my aerospace stuff, I'm thinking of making a separate channel for all that, which I was going to after my first balloon flight and put the video up there. Uh, incidentally, well, yeah, that, that didn't go as planned. Oh, look at that. Because the balloon is still lying in a field somewhere or something. It's just, it's gone. <laughs> Whatever, it might come back, it might not, but it's either way, it's gone. Uh, well, which one was supposed to be, I think it was E was the theoretically habitable one, but all the planets in the Trappist system are probably tidally locked, and because uh, the Trappist star is a red dwarf, they might not be terribly healthy planets to live on, because red dwarfs are good and all, but they tend to have a very powerful flare activity, and because they're cooler, their habitable zones are closer in, so when they flare, they probably uh, strip atmospheres and sanitize planets. So, probably not the best place to look for life. Maybe, possibly, I doubt it. Uh, that's why I'm still very much a fan of K-type stars, because you can get a lot of good stuff going on there. Nope, Kepler, not Kelp. Kepler... Was it 45? I think that's, that's what I was told to go to. So we're going to go there. Because why not? Doop. Number of planets. One. Well, 
let's just go to the planet then. Why not? It is a very, very hot Jupiter. And it looks pretty, well, like a hot Jupiter. What more did I expect? Precisely. Um, actually, I think the first planet discovered our... Um, no, the first exoplanet, there we go, was a super large Jupiter gas giant uh, around a star. And I, the name was like HD something, 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 something. It's a huge um, number. But yeah, gas giants are very e are much easier to see or to, to detect because their gravity is higher. Which, you know, makes sense if you think about it. Right then, I was also asked to go to a, uh, a brown dwarf known as Wise08. Is that it? It's one of these. 08, I5, 0714. Yep, that's it. Boop. No. I want to go there. Yeah. 0714. This is apparently the coldest brown dwarf currently known. And I just zipped right by it, because I'm very good at this. Now, brown dwarfs are cool, because they're kind of in that in-between in zone. They're not quite stars, they're not quite planets. They're just... They just are. Let's bring the exposure up. That did not help at all. Uh, but yeah. They're kind of like what, what happens when you have a a planet that was big enough that it could start nuclear reactions in its core, but it wasn't big enough to initiate fusion. And oh, I remember it's like the difference between a big gas giant and a uh, small star is like lithium in the atmosphere or something like that. I'll have to look that up. I remember when I was making my planet classification system, I had... Uh, lithium was a reference to something. One second. Why is that open? Uh, my cat opening my door and leaving and not closing it again. Which, I guess she's a cat, so she's not going to do it anyways. <laughs> oh. Alright. Um, carrying on. RSC. Oh. No, that's an 8. 8496-11735-0-0-3B3. Does this exist? Object not found. Does it exist now? Object not found. That he says now, object not found. RSC 8496-11735-0-0-3B3. Oh, that's a... Uh, slash. No. Hmm. I apologize, but I can't seem to find this planet. Random star... Maybe the C doesn't have to be there, maybe it's... Nope. Hmm. Disappointing. Kind of. What time we're looking at? Uh, almost ten minutes of just absolute nothing. Uh, but yeah, what was I talking about beforehand? The, ch the channel? Yeah. So, I'm gonna do videos once a week. I'll try to do more fun stuff too, because why not? Um, screwing around in Gmod, uh, more Space Engine playing other things. I don't know. This isn't really a gaming channel. It's more just a channel. <laughs> and I'm probably going to start a new channel dedicated <clears throat> to my space science stuff because that's always fun. <clears throat> um, although primarily right now I'm working on balloons, uh, the suit, and rocket stuff. So that'll all go over there. Like I have a um, an induction coil, like an, an induction heater, and I'm ordering in some carbon rods, which are going to act as the core for my induction thermal engine thing, like a test thing. And I've decided to actually make the engine components just off out of off-the-shelf stuff. 
instead of getting custom-made CNC stuff, because that's expensive. But the peroxide rocket that I'm working on will use custom CNC material, and I might actually be able to get a metal lathe so I can make parts in-house, like myself. Because I haven't used a metal lathe in a long-ass time, but I do know how to use one, and they're a great piece of kit. And they're not as expensive as I thought, which is nice. So, <laughs> that could happen, that'd be great. And we have a plant here with life. Eh, kind of leave it like that. This is an interesting planet. Avigent terrestrial organic unicellular. Doesn't seem to have water. Mm, okay, what's the atmosphere looking like? Mostly carbon dioxide, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur dioxide, argon, and carbon monoxide. Hmm. Intriguing. Now let's check the physical characteristics. Water, ice envelope, does not have one. Uh, tidal heating, gravity, da da da. Huh. Won't tell me the hydrosphere. That makes me wonder what kind of... Well, it's a hot... Oh, it's arid, that's probably why. So if it does have water, it's probably uh, subterranean. Unless they use different materials as a solvent. Actually, wait, no, let me check. The pressure's pretty high. Density, air temperature is very high. So I'm gonna assume that... No. It's not going to use things like ammonia as the fluid. It probably has water under the surface. The surface is too hot for water to exist, but... Well, actually... Uh, the atmospheric pressure is 15 atmospheres. And its temperature was 200 degrees, something like that. So... The atmospheric pressure might actually be high enough that the water can remain liquid without boiling. Possibly. When I was playing around with steam rockets, something I um, had to figure out pretty early on was what you can do is you take water and you put it in a tank and you pressurize it um, fairly high. And then when it's under pressure, you can heat it up to like 200 degrees Celsius and the water won't boil, it stays as a liquid. And then after that, what you do is you just dump it into the engine and once the water, the superheated water hits the low pressure engine, it flashes the steam immediately. So, going off what I know about that, this planet might be able to have liquid water on its surface. It would be superheated and very uncomfortable at 15 PSI, or 15 atmospheres. But no guarantees. Hmm. I'd have to do the calculations, which I can't do in my head, so... Possibly. Actually, very, very possible. But, judging by the fact that it's arid, I'm not seeing any fluid, I'm going to doubt there's water on the surface. It's probably all subterranean. Oop, and the game is frozen because I get too close and it freezes. Yay. Always fun. It'll come back. Any second now. Yep, yep, see it's 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 getting there. There we go. Ugh. I don't like it here. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Let's check out its moons. A warm asteroid. Well, that sounds pleasant. Wow, I love the detail. That's gorgeous. It has two little moons. Moonlets. Moons. Hmm. Oh. oh what was I turn off? All right. Uh, this reminded me of game stuff. I'm still working on Cosmic Ocean, mind you. Um, I had to... like, move everything over into a new save file, because the one I was using had some glitches to it that were just causing issues, and it, w it, it was harder to, like, fix it, so I just wanted to screw it, I'll just move everything over to a new one, so... That was a bit of a setback, but not a huge one. It takes, like, maybe 20 minutes to rebuild everything. I just need to move everything over. But, um, yes, yeah, so that's a thing. Still working on the ship models and all that. Uh, that'll happen eventually. It's a fairly large project, so I can't uh, promise a usable or playable game anytime soon. 
but pro progress is being made. And I'm still working on the, the next update for Go Outside Simulator, which will be hopefully the one that brings it out of early access. It'll have a bunch of just fixes and a new level, but I'm having issues with one of the scripts, so that's also indeterminate. <laughs> Everything I do, I primarily do for fun. YouTube is for fun. I don't want YouTube to be a job. I don't want to do it full-time. Um, game development is just kind of a fun thing I do. It's a hobby, really. It was never intended to be a job, but uh, I spend more, more time on it than anything else currently, so it's kind of a job. Ooh, a frigid Jupiter with a moon with life. I'm going to go off on a limb here and say that it's probably an ice shell moon. Hmm. Maybe? Oh yeah, it's gonna be an ice shell. Actually, no, it has an atmosphere. A fairly substantial atmosphere. And a hydrosphere. Composed of... That's pretty deep. The composition. Nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and argon. Wait, what? Nitrogen? So it isn't water. Well, it has water in the atmosphere. Unless that's just dissolved. Wait a minute. This isn't, a, this isn't an ice shell moon. What's the temperature looking like? Oh yeah, well it is pretty frozen. So... No, it is, this would be an ice shell. There wouldn't be liquid water. Uh, or liquid oceans on this. Well, there could be stuff uh, underneath it. Oh yeah, this is, this, is a, this is more of a shell. But it has an atmosphere, which is interesting. I like that, but the liquid nitrogen? No, I can't be it. Unless this is an ocean. No, I don't think- no, it's just rock. Huh, curious. But it didn't say subglacial. It says marine. Oh, it's exotic, okay. You know, don't remember the temperature? Maybe it is, um... Yeah, maybe it is a liquid nitrogen uh, ocean hydrosphere. But the question is, what what exotic form of life would use liquid nitrogen as its universal solvent? I can't think of anything that would work with that, honestly. I know that like liquid hydrocarbons can work with carbon and possibly other things like silicon, maybe phosphorus, but liquid nitrogen as a universal solvent? Huh. That's curious. I wish it would tell me about the, uh, the life. Like, exotic. What do you mean by exotic? What is its biochemistry? I'm intrigued by this. I guess I'll never know. Alternative biochemistries actually fascinate me. Um, like, I love the, uh, even things that are, like, they, they still rely on carbon, but they use, like, ammonia or hydrocarbons as their, as their solvent. Kind of like the idea of um, methanogenic life on Titan that consumes hydrogen and produces methane um, and lives in the methane lakes or uses ammonia underneath the ice crust as a solvent. And it's like, I love that idea. It's so cool. Or the idea of a life form completely alien to our own that uses silicone or a metalloid as its base for its genetic code. And you get things like, well, like the idea that like, like, like desert varnish might be a part of the shadow biosphere where it's actually a life form composed of a different biochemistry. Or this, um, there was research done that, oh, like in 2003, where if you suspend um, inorganic particles into plasma fields, they'll start to like self-arrange into helix structures that interact with each other and can replicate themselves. And over time, uh, more robust versions 
remain and the weaker ones fall apart. And this is the idea of plasma-based life. It's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, uh, that's 20 minutes. Ooh, we'll go here first. Boop. Uh, and we'll find out where our life-bearing location is. It appears to be here. Subglacial and an ice shell moon. Aha. I swear to God, ice shell moons probably have more life in the universe than any other body in the soul, in like in the universe. It just, I'm willing to bet money on that. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This video got off to a slow start. I apologize, but it was more just an informational video. But um, yeah. So yeah, every week, every week I'll try to do a new, a new video at a minimum. So a week or more, or one a week or more. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and space.